Hi, my name is Michaela Perez, and this summer I'm part of CU Boulder's Research Experience for Community College Students program. And since mid-May, I've been visiting various transects around and within Boulder County open spaces to collect coyote scat. Our samples need to be fresh enough to contain viable DNA and microbiome material, and these samples will later be tested in a lab at CU once the field work is complete in the next year. This study is led by PhD candidate Emily Beam, and the tasks require that we visit transects and make vigorous observations while hiking and visiting the sites frequently on a rotating basis. When we're collecting samples, we note the time, GPS coordinates, elevation, site name, and brief notes on scat age and appearance. When the samples are tested, the data will be organized based on individual coyote DNA found and tested for the parasite load, hormone expression, and diet. This information can help us in the investigation of how predators behave and are affected by the proximity to humans. We can also investigate comparisons of the sample results of high country or wilderness coyotes versus coyotes closer to human settlements. And some of the comparisons after receiving lab results could help to understand behavior. For example, if toxoplasmosis levels are higher in suburban coyotes than alpine coyotes, that could be an indicator of bold behavior and could affect the coyote behavior as they interface with humans. While spending some time out in the field, many questions have come to my mind, but I will be exploring further in one of these questions that have most intrigued, intrigued me in the short time in the field so far. One question is, or one option to explore is considering when it might be possible to collaborate with the public on scientific data collection. Traveling the transects has been and can be time consuming and labor intensive. And it's up to chance as to when scientists will find the data in time to be viable. With the help of the public and those interested in their neighborhood, neighborhood coyotes, we could enlist the observations of those who frequent the trails and transects very regularly. And this process could include opportunities for public education and data education walks for those passionate about science and passionate about their local surroundings. A project like this would involve community engagement, but would also require cooperation with the city. I would love to explore the streamlining processes that could lead to greater ease and efficiency in signifying when viable samples are available for scientists. Another option is coyotes are interestingly social poopers, and they often, their scat can be found near that of other coyotes and other species of animals. It, it would be fascinating to explore the language that is conveyed in these acts and read more about the olfactory communication of animals. Another route is GIS, Global Information Systems, which can be really useful for visualizing and comparing data collected at multiple sites. For example, with the GPS coordinates that we're gathering, we can map where the greatest frequency and proximity of samples were collected, and then go to those sites and see if there are similarities in the terrain and make observations based off of that. And this can help future researchers hone in on optimal collection sites and best utilize their field time as well as identify locations. So those are some of the methods that could be used and the options that could be explored further in my short time with the Rex research program. Uh, thank you for listening. Bye.